Hi everybody, welcome once again to the Low on Health Daily Rambling, me going over what I've done the last past day or so. Um, just funny kind of turn of events just recently. Um, basically my sleep schedule has been just really completely off, and actually the other day, other night, it's really hard to frame the reference. Like I actually get like a headache probably from playing God of War, which I'll get to later. But I was like, okay, whatever, I'll take some medicine, some milk, and uh, just, you know, some bay or some headache relief, and just, you know, go to sleep real quick, and, you know, get a good night's sleep. So I did that the other night. And then I uh, fell asleep really quick, it was nice and restful, and then I woke up, felt really rested. The only problem was I woke up at like 4 a.m., so I got like three hours of sleep. Tried to go back, I could sleep again, and uh, just couldn't. You know, you ever have those moments where you try to go back to sleep and you just can't? So after basically like an hour of trying to go back to sleep, I was like, screw it, I'm just going to, you know, start my day, I guess, after a three-hour nap. <laughs> hey, kitty. Rufus is here watching the birds. Yeah, um... So, I was like, whatever, so I actually popped in God of War and uh, finished that up, because I had put it basically like six hours into it, then stopped, and then just kind of woke up at four, started playing it around five, and then beat it so I could send it back out, um, and then I basically waited for, uh, you know, McDonald's basically to start their lunch menu, and then I went out, got McDonald's, which is always a good thing for me, because McDonald's is kind of like the high point of my week, food-wise, uh, so uh, that was kind of interesting, and then I, uh, after eating and watched Lost, which was a Sawyer episode, which was freaking awesome because you gotta love Sawyer episodes. Um, and after that, I was sleepy, so then I uh, proceeded to take a like a five hour nap. So right now, my sleep skills just is just totally out of whack. Um, so it's just really interesting trying to gain my you know organize my thoughts and kind of get my day together, not knowing exactly what my energy level is gonna be. But uh, going forward, you know, let's see, it'll be interesting. But I just want to mention some quick things here off the net that I found. Uh, looks like uh, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep has got a, basically got a you know a North America release date, which is going to be a vague summer release date. So I guess it doesn't actually have a release date. The good news is it is coming over here, which is great because I love me some Kingdom Hearts. It's been a while since we had it, um, and I'm eagerly anticipating the next entry in the series for Kingdom Hearts 3. This is kind of like a prequel. So it's going to be interesting. I always love the basically the art design, the character design. The only problem I'm, I'll probably have with Kingdom Hearts is basically the rehashing of the worlds over and over again. I don't know if I could keep going to the same seven worlds, twelve worlds over and over again. But hopefully with the different characters and different kind of story arc, it'll be interesting. It does look like they're putting some extra things in here from the Japanese version. and It should just be kind of fun. Uh, so I am eagerly anticipating that. Moving on here. Destructoid has the review up on Final Fantasy XIII, in which case this, stint, this uh, guy, Jim Sterling, basically kind of gives it kind of a lambasted review, in which case he does all the negative things about it. But ironically, this is the same guy that I kind of bitched about before giving a negative review to Heavy Rain and whatnot, and the flack he gets for it. Uh, but he like, like I didn't enjoy Final Fantasy XIII at all, and he didn't beat it, and I didn't beat it. But he has says, you know, Destructed has their own guidelines where they talk about, you know, they don't have to beat the game, they just have to get an accurate impression of it to do a review. Um, in which case, I think that's awesome that he does that. And I kind of feel bad for kind of, you know, berating him before about Heavy Rain, but this is a guy almost kind of like myself that just probably just sees the negative in games more than other people do because they're so, like, you know, rose-eyed, uh, rose-colored glasses on a lot of these games. In which case, he mentions that, yes, this is the worst Final Fantasy in the series, and I do, you know, honestly uh, kind of agree with him. So that's I think that's kind of cool that, you know, I maybe don't see eye to eye on him with everything, but I kind of do agree with him on some things, and this is basically one of them. He gives it a four, which is kind of funny. Um, which is actually, I mean, you know, not to keep talking about this guy, but early later on, he actually gets, you know, this whole basically, you know, joys of being a video game reviewer. He gets a piece basically where people call him out, they yell at him, and they basically bitch at him about, you know, he doesn't take two games too seriously. He's just trying to get, you know, publicity for being all kind of negative and stuff. And he's like, hey. I'm just doing what I'm doing, you know, just like me. I'll say the negative thing bad, you know, the negative things about games, I really don't care. It's my opinion. If you guys don't want to read it, then fine. But it is nice to kind of have a guy that will stick to his guns and basically not just say a game's great and give it, you know, eights and nines. He'll say what's wrong with it and, you know, if it's true to the series or why he did or didn't enjoy it, which is kind of like what I do too. So it's just kind of funny. I, I guess I actually do kind of agree with this guy and just like he didn't like Assassin's Creed 2, and I guess I hate to say I kind of agree with this guy on a lot of points, which is just kind of weird, I guess, you know, not everybody meets eye to eye, but it's just interesting, you know, not all reviewers have to be positive, which is good to see. Anywho, moving on, like I said, slowed kind of new day the last past two days, nothing really for me to talk about. Uh, Xbox Live, let's see what everybody's doing here, because it's on kind of earlier in the day, we've got people doing stuff, 
it looks like somebody's of course watching a video and then of course we got a group of people basically playing Halo ODST they're working on the legendary campaign which uh I did actually do with Darren another time but it, they're basically looking for all the story com elements the telephone uh little pod thingies in which case when I looked into it it looked like it was going to be too much of a hassle to find all of them I think you have to do them in a certain order to unlock the achievement just didn't feel worth it uh, but they're going for it good for them uh, Lee also said, hey, you want to play ODST? I'm like, oh, sorry guys, actually, I don't own it. I was, I rented it at the time, and I probably will actually get back to renting it once the, uh, Halo Reach beta, which should be, I think, May 5th or something, like in two months. So I'll probably re-rent the game then and probably actually go through the campaign and stuff, uh, on Legendary, and then also do the beta, which should actually be kind of interesting. I'm a little bit looking forward to it. Uh, Gamefly-wise, um, like I said, I got God of War. I beat it, banged it out, uh, sent it back. Uh, that was kind of cool, just kind of get it out in the day. Um, my impressions of the game aren't very high. It, it was almost more of a platformer than a classic God of War 3 game, in which case that was probably where I got my headache from. I just, it was aggravating the platforming elements and that a lot of the controls for the platforming elements just didn't seem to be working right. Like the double jump is very hit or miss. It wasn't my controller. I mean, it actually aggravated me to the point where I threw my controller because I spent like probably 30 minutes in a five minute platformer area just because I would get so far and then the double jump wouldn't recognize. Um, there's also some dead uh, zone spaces where you're trying to open up a chest and it wouldn't. Um, and there's just really kind of some design flaws, some de uh, level design and level direction elements that just weren't good. Um, the game looks great, I'll give it that. I mean, naturally that's what it's for. And the hack and slash, it's good. But just there's a lot of more platforming and stupid elements that didn't really seem right. Uh, they did keep the quick time events down to a minimum, which I did enjoy. That was kind of cool. Um, but, you know, a solid game is just... I don't know, it just didn't, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but it was still, still, a, I'm not even going to say enjoyable, still a, a decent game to play through. Um, and I am still working on Divinity 2, actually, when I'm done with this and get it uploaded, I probably will get back to playing that, I really do enjoy that game a lot. And of course, Yakuza 3 down the line, whenever I get through with Divinity. But the good news is, I should have got a war back, in which case they should get it back in time for Just Cause, which I'm eagerly anticipating, and then, uh, from there, we kind of got like a lull, and then uh, it's 3D Dot Heroes, uh, it looks like Alan Wake and Red Dead Redemption are coming out at the same time with 3D Dot Heroes, so I'm going to have to make some type of choice there about what I'm going to do. But other than that, it looks like the gaming drought is coming up, so should be interesting. But uh, other than that, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I do apologize, there wasn't that much going on, but my sleep schedule has kind of just been up and down, up and down. Um, and uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.